Okay, well today we're just playing in the shop this afternoon. I've done stuff that I needed to do earlier. We've done some CNC programming and I run the CNC lathe a little bit, just getting some just dialing in a little project. We're doing some little handles for the little Atlas milling machine right now. Um, so I'm dialing in that programming. But anyway I've got the mill out or the uh, shaper out. I've got a couple projects I want to do with it. So got it out today, cleaned it up, got everything oiled up and, and running again. And I just thought I'd give you a quick overview. I've been running it for the last hour or so, and I'm, all I'm doing is decking off a piece of aluminum. Um, I've got several pieces of just saw cut stuff, and I was decided to square this up just because I had it and wanted something to run on the machine. So this is a ratcheting gear case. It uh, traverses the table left to right, and it goes both ways depending on what it is. This is a little gear case that everybody breaks. They crack out right there. And the reason they crack out is if you run into the end of, the end of their travel and they run out of traverse on them, why well, uh, it cracks that case right out there. Um, it's operator error is what it is. I, I you know, people will say that there it's just operator error. So anyway, I guess some of the guys are trying to 3D print them. I kind of have my doubts as to whether that's going to work. But their argument is they, they've got the machines and they uh, they say that if they don't hold up, why they can print another one just like that and be up and running again. But, you know, I think you need these little machines to be as close to original as you can, you know, or at least to look original. So when they start doing these plastic guards for them and uh, the 3D printed parts, I'm not a big fan of that. I'm a little bit old school, I guess, in that respect. But, uh, anyway, I reproduce a lot of the handles for them, and I do them out of stainless steel rather than the Zanac. I may do something out of Zanac and chrome play them at some point in time, but for right now, the, the handles that I reproduce, I just do in, in stainless steel. And usually they're CNC out, most of them. Um, I produce both guards, this guard and the other guard, for, for the shaper. So those will be back on the website here in the next probably two months or so. We'll see how fast I'm going to do the pattern for those. Um, this adjusts your stroke length, and Atlas did a really good job because all the adjustments on this machine is operated by one wrench, square wrench. It, it uh, runs the um, vise, it's the size for the vise, it's the square for the traverse of the table and the elevation of the table. It fits on there, you loosen this nut, and that adjusts your stroke length, so it's adjustable for, and it's a seven inch shaper, so you've got seven inches of stroke. And this one up here adjusts the um, positioning of the of the ram. It's adjustable front to rear for how far it traverses from the back. Um, you loosen this and adjust your traverse there. So that's the way that's operated. Um, this is your feed clutch. When you disengage it, why it will. There's a brake on the other side that will stop it. Otherwise, it tends to want to float a little bit. Usually, maybe it's not going to right now. Get a little bit farther here. See if you get to that point. Well, usually it'll creep a little bit, but there's a break on there on the back side that engages your feed mechanism or your uh, clutch mechanism. And that's pretty much the way of the little shaper. Um, Atlas has got a couple of grease cups to, to lube them. These are original grease cups down here. I don't know if this is an original or not, but there's one here and it's packed with grease and you can give it a little twist periodically. It's got oil cups um, several places. This is an old enough machine. The, the motor's um, oil loop, so you have to, to uh, add oil to that periodically, and then there's your oil fittings. Uh, feed mechanism is, for, is left and right, depending on which position it is. This is uh, traverses to the right, and uh, there's a neutral, and then it traverses to the left as you go the other way. Another grease step on the other side, there's a door over here that uh, accesses the, the internals of it. And that's pretty much the little shaper. You know, they're a fun little toy. It's, uh, it's great for cutting things like dovetails and tooling blocks and things like that. Uh, like I say, I've got several little things that I want to build with it, so I wanted to, wanted to play with it today. It's kind of mindless. I'm just letting the machine run. And this thing is kind of enjoyable to watch it. And I think this is the, the last pass across the top of this. Um, accessories for this machine, they offer the vise. And they, uh, Atlas offers the vise for both the um, shaper and the milling machine. They're the same vise with the exception of the base. The, the shaper vise has got four bolt holes, whereas the milling vise, the base only has two holes that sit on the, 
on the uh, milling table. Otherwise, the vise itself is the same body. They make a rotary table. And we have a rotary table right here. Yeah, they get a rotary table, which is the same, the same as the, uh, the same as the vise. I make one for the mill and the and the uh, shaper, and the only difference is the base. Otherwise, they're the same. I believe they made a dividing head for the shaper. This is the dividing head. And it mounts to the table. It's got two hold down holes, so it mounts into the T-slots over there. And that was designed specifically for the shaper. Anyway, these are just an enjoyable little machine to watch. Um, I've wasted about two hours here today just playing with the machine, and, and it's uh, it's been an enjoyable day for me. So I'm going uh, to finish decking off the top of this. This looks like it's going to be the last pass for this across here, and I'll show you the finish we're getting with it. And then I think I'm going to close this up and go into the house, sit down and have a cup of coffee, and do a little, do a little computer work. I've got some tuning to do on the CNC program for the handles for the milling machine. These are the original handles for the overarm. This is the handle that goes down in and holds the overarm support. There's two of these on the head of the milling machine, and I'll reproduce them in two parts of stainless steel. So I've got to, uh, I've got to tune this program just a little bit for the upper part. And we have finished our cut right there. So we can disengage our ratchet, and it will just operate itself like that. And then to stop the machine, you disengage the clutch, and bring it to the rest position in the back, and then we can power it down. So that's the way that goes. And the thing about the shaper is you don't, uh, you're not messing with an expensive milling cutter, you're single point tooling these. They're really a versatile machine, they're not very popular anymore because they're they're a slow machine to operate. Well, I think we're about done. We got a little cleanup to do here, but I did want to show off the surface finish on this a little bit. Look at that shine. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know that it's showing got a few little tool lines across it but for um, what this machine is intended to be used for that's a really really nice finish in a piece of aluminum um, and you can't uh, I can feel them just barely there's a there's a little line right across there but um, and I didn't bother to, to hone that tool before I did that final finishing pass but that's a pretty nice finish on there There's that one little tooling line right in the middle. There's a couple other ones, but that's the that's the worst of them. Yeah. Anyway, time to clean up my little bit of a mess here and go in, sit down, have a cup of coffee, and sit in front of the computer for a little bit. So if you find this enjoyable, why go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. Hopefully, you got some at least some enjoyment out of this. So any comments or suggestions you've got for me, leave them in the comment section below. And thanks for taking the time to watch.